Hi, I'm Chris Amori and welcome to another Virtual Administrator Training Session. Today we're going to discuss the new Discovery Module. Now, this module first appeared in Kaseya 6.3 and for those of you that have used Kaseya before 6.3, the Discovery Module is basically the replacement for the Land Watch. This module is a pretty complex piece of software and, and it's actually taken me uh, quite a while to kind of wrap my head around it and, and figure out how to present it in a way that makes it easy for you to understand and makes it the most useful. So what I've decided to do is break this into three separate parts. So the first part, we'll call it like Discovery 101, I want to focus on using uh, Discovery to run the scan on your network and also be able to deploy additional agents without having to touch them. This is the basic functionality of LandWatch from the previous versions. In Discovery 201, we're going to build on this to use a probe to run daily scans to notify you when new machines appear and also use Active Directory to deploy the agents in the event that the um, deploy agent fails, um, which we do in Discovery 101. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about how to troubleshoot and, and, and some best practices for Discovery. And I also want to make sure that you understand how Discovery relates to the Kaseya Network Monitoring 5.0 that will that'll be out soon. So in our last session in Discovery 301, we're going to really get into how to automate this functionality, how to use Discovery using these daily scans to, to instantly install an agent or to use act, actually monitor Active Directory so that when a new machine appears in Active Directory, it can install the agent for you. So Discovery 101. So in this first session, I want to talk about a few things that will help you get started using Discovery quickly. I want to make sure that you understand the types of probes that are run um, and the scans. I also want to make sure that you can run your first scan and then using that scan be able to deploy additional agents from your Kaseya server to your network. And I want to make sure that you've enabled the auto harvesting uh, that may be disabled uh, if you're using the SAS program. So let's talk about probes. Basically a probe is simply an executable that runs on a machine. Okay, it's important to remember that it's not a service that's run. There's nothing permanently installed on the machine. The system is going to select a machine that, that is best suited to run this. It looks at uptime history and it looks at the operating system. Or in many cases, you can select the machine that you want. Now, if you select the machine, you want to make sure that you use a machine that is uh, Windows um, 7 or higher um, or, or a uh, domain controller or, or a server operating system. It is not recommended that you use Windows XP for this. There's four different types of probes. We're going to talk about an NMAP probe. Um, there's a machine audit probe. And then optionally, you can use vPro and uh, SNMP to get additional information about your network. All right, so let's talk about uh, the scans that happen. So the first thing that you're going to see is, is in this process is there's, there's going to be a status called ready to install or ready to scan. And after you select the network and you uh, begin the, the scan, you're going to see this status change. And we're going to show this in, in just a minute, but I just want to make sure you understand. First thing that's going to happen is it's going to go out and it's going to install the, these executables so that it can um, you know, begin the scan process. As soon as they're finished, it's going to perform a quick scan using the NMAP. So um, unlike LandWatch, um, which used more of a ping scan, this new discovery uses NMAP to very quickly go out there and discover all of the devices that are on your network within that scan range. And it's going to basically see who's out there and who's alive. And then based on that information, it's going to do what's called a deep scan, which is really going to go in and look at all that. It's going to run a port scan and it's going to try to identify uh, the, the operating system and um, so that you, you, know, you have all the information about that machine in order to classify it. 
And the last thing it's going to do is it's going to do kind of a DNS matching. It's going to use a little utility called KPRT PNG, you know, um, to discover uh, the device name uh, by by doing kind of a reverse lookup for DNS and using the MAC address. And if it can't find it there, to do a lookup in a MAC address table to identify the manufacturer of that device. So that's the process that you're going to see. All right, so let's get started and, and go through this uh, live for you. So you can see here in my uh, network, I've, I've already gone out and installed and deployed an agent to one of my domain controllers, okay? Uh, we have videos that will show you, you know, a kind of a quick start video how to deploy agents. I'm not going to cover that here. So go out and install the agent, preferably on a domain controller. If you don't have a domain controller, just pick a Windows 7 machine. It can technically be any machine, but I'd like to use a domain controller as the best practice. Once you've installed the agent out there, um, what I want you to do is to make sure that you have um, what's called automatic harvesting enabled. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the discovery module and you're going to go to administration settings and you're going to click on this edit button and you're going to enable automatic network harvesting. Um, you can set this for anything you want. I, I'll set it for an hour. I'm going to tell it to only use online agents and I'll tell it to ignore networks that have a subnet mask which is 255, 255, 255, 255. And then um, lastly, if you want to get alerted when new devices appear on the network, you can select any of these uh, different things. Right now, I'm not going to turn that on because I don't want to get bombarded with um, information. So uh, I would say, you know, maybe do that a little bit later. Right now, leave it off. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then I'm going to go back to my uh, LAN watch by network. Okay, the next thing I want you to do before we go any further, we need to change a setting on the agent deployment policy. So select the network that's shown. Um, just highlight the, um, this, the probe that we're using down here, the machine that we're going to use, and click on the tab that says agent deployment policy. And what we need to do is we need to edit this and we need to set it up and we need to select what agent we want to install on these machines. So my suggestion is to use the audit agent. As you probably know, our audit agent really doesn't fix or update anything. It really just runs a few scripts, does some basic uh, audits, and that's about it. So the audit agent would be a good, like, all-purpose um, agent to install. Now, if you are going to set, do this in stages where you're going to do the servers first and the workstations next, you could select workstations or servers here go, uh, we'll run the scan, we'll do the installation, then we'll come back, we'll change this, and, and then redeploy again. But, it, again, recommendation is just use the audit agent for right now. You can um, pick the group that you want to use um, to, to put it in. So you can uh, select, for the, we set up a demo company here, so we can select the uh, demo company, and then we can select the deployer agent, okay? Uh, the deployer agent is, the, is, in this case, the only agent that we have, right? There's no other agents um, that we've installed. But if this was a network where you've already installed a bunch of agents, you could pick a different agent if you wanted to to deploy it. Now, uh, down below here, we have network credentials. Um, you would want to put in the domain credentials. Now, you can either enter these here or you can enter these when we go to deploy the agent. Um, I'm going to enter them later, but um, you could do that as well. Now, one thing to notice is uh, we have not checked this box automatically install agents. So right now, I don't want agents to be automatically installed. So I'm going to uncheck that box, and I'm going to manually uh, install them after we run the scan. You'll notice that there's sections for Macintosh and Linux here with all the same information. It's important to remember that the only way for you to install a Mac agent or a Linux agent is to install it from another like operating system. Okay? And that's important. If we don't have a Macintosh computer with an agent manually installed, we can't automatically push an agent to another Mac. It's, it's match to match, Windows to Windows, Mac to Mac, Linux to Linux. We can't cross at all. We can't go Windows to Linux or, or Mac. Okay? So, 
feel free to fill these out um, if you like. But again, if you don't, because we don't have a deployer agent in here that matches that, uh, you really can't do do anything. It's not going. It's not going to install correctly. Okay. All right. So fill all that out, and then uh, when you're ready, uh, down at the bottom there, you see there's the save button, and you're going to save that, and then we're going to move on. So in the LAN Watch by Network, um, you can see that we have, um, it's already, uh, it's basically found the first network. What I want you to do is go into Edit, uh, select the network here, click Edit, and then give it a name. In this case, I've given it, um, it, you know, Discovery Demo. It'll probably come up and, and be called Unnamed to begin with. So I'm gonna, I'm going to um, select the network name Discovery Demo. Uh, if you, uh, in this case, we're using the probe that was used. It's the only agent that we have. If you had another agent or another probe, you could select a different probe here. You can select the IP range or change it. Normally, it defaults to the full subnet mask for that machine. Um, any exclusions that are needed, and then you can select the company organization that you want to put it in. So I'm going to put it in the, the D-Demo um, organization here. Uh, all this other information is really optional. The only thing that I might suggest changing is the days to keep unseen devices. Um, I like to bump that up a little bit. Uh, basically, this way, if somebody's bringing a laptop in once a week or something like that, you're not going to keep seeing that laptop appear unless it's been gone for more than 30 days. But feel free, leave it at 7, 14, but I, I, I choose 30. So we got that in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click Save and Scan. Uh, by the way, before we do that, we do have the SNMP and the vPro settings. Okay, so if you do want to enable an SNMP scan, check that box, put in your public, you know, the community strings, which is usually public, public. Or under vPro, if you've got vPro set up on your machines, you can enable that, put your username and password that you use to enable vPro, and it will actually be able to scan those devices and identify them for you. Okay? All right, so with that uh, being said, I'm going to click on uh, Save and Scan. So when we hit Save and Scan, you can see here over on the right, the status instantly changed to Installing. All right, remember our, our different statuses. And what you can do is you can click the Refresh button, and just tap it every so often and you can wait for these statuses to change and let it go through, okay? All right, I've refreshed my screen and you can see now the status is performing quick scan and we're gonna let that run and we're gonna wait for the deep scan. And there you can see it changed right to a deep scan. So you saw how fast it changed um, and was able to run that quick scan. It's a very, very fast um, scan. This one takes a little bit longer, so we're going to go ahead and pause and we're going to wait for that to finish. Okay, so we're back and you can see the status went back to ready to scan. It took about maybe five minutes for that to finish, the, the deep scan. So now we've finished this scan on that network. And to see the results, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the discovered devices grid view and we're going to select that. And you're going to see that it's going to bring up all of the devices that we have. Uh, hang on, let me just clear this filter here. All right. So you can see I've got 64 devices that are on my network. On the left-hand side, you can see some devices have kind of the little, uh, you know, stop symbol. It's, it's basically an invalid device type if you hover over it. There's others that have a checkbox that say yes. So what that means is that the things that are yes are theoretically something that we could install a Kaseya agent to. It's identified it either as a Windows, a Mac, or a Linux machine. Okay? And so we can go down and we can scroll through our list and look at um, all the different devices. You're going to notice that there are some devices that have, um, they're unclassified or they're unknown. So these are things that it was unable to figure out what operating system, what kind of device it is. Now, what you can do is if you see this little I here under the Nmap column, if you click on that, it'll bring up the results from the deep scan. And you'll notice that it, through the MAC address, um, the lookup, it's identified. That's what the MAC means here, not that it's a Macintosh. It means it used the MAC address to identify the vendor as Shortel, um, because this, this prefix is unique to Shortel. All right, so it knows it's a Shortel and these ports are open on it, all right? You can go in and either change the device type if you like, or um, you know change the name even. We can change the device name. But in this case, there's nothing that we can do with a, that's a VoIP phone. Um, there is actually no specific setting for that. 
So I'm just going to leave it unclassified for now. If I wanted to, I could make it just a generic network device. Um, if you have other, um, other devices uh, that come up that aren't classified correctly, all you have to do is select that uh, particular device, go up to change type, and select the particular type you want it to be from the list, and then assign that to, um, to that machine. Okay. All right. So now that we have our list, we can go in and we can actually use this to push the agent out. That's what we want to do. We'd rather not touch 64 different devices or even if uh, in this case I'm only, only interested in the Windows devices. And by the way, that filter that I had set there at the beginning, um, we can go ahead and turn that on to show just the Windows devices. So I have 29 Windows devices in this network. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a couple of them. I'm going to pick on um, this one and uh, this one. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to push the agent out to just those machines. Now normally in a regular network you would probably select all and you would just simply uh, deploy, the, deploy the agent to all the Windows machines. Or if you, if you knew which ones were your servers, you could go and pick you know, the individual servers and then um, uh, push that agent out to just that server. But in this case, we're going to just put it on a couple of machines here. Um, this is my internal network. I don't need to install a second agent on it. It's already got a Kasei agent, but I'm, putting, I'm going to put another one on a couple of them for you just to show you how to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a couple of these machines here and deploy the package to just those machines. So I'm going to click on the deploy agent. I'm going to type in the domain administrator credentials. So I have access to those machines, and then I'm going to hit deploy. Okay, so the, it's going to go out and using a little utility called kConnect, it's going to um, establish a connection with those machines using the administrative credentials that we gave it, and it's going to try to push those agents out to that machine. All right. If those of you that remember the LAN watch, we used to be able to do a similar thing. And if you remember, um, it didn't always work then. Well, part of that was they used a different utility. Uh, the K-Connect is, is a lot more reliable. But there may be times that this doesn't work. Um, but we've had pretty good luck with it uh, so far. So, you know, give it a shot. It's definitely worth it. And, um, you know, you'll, you'll, um, if you don't have luck, if there is a problem, then uh, using, if you watch some of the other sessions, we're going to talk about how to push this out through Active Directory. But um, for the most part, this will, um, this should work for you. So I'm just going to refresh the screen here, um, see if it's in, and you can see, boom. Notice how the icon here has now changed. It's showing you the status of that machine. And if we go back to our agent tab, and we look at our agent status, you'll notice we now have two machines, um, two more machines in our network. Uh, it was that easy and it was really that fast. It happened kind of while we were talking. I didn't pause that at all there. So basically we're finished. We accomplished our mission of getting those machines into our network without having to actually touch them. So again, just a quick review. Um, first thing, make sure that you have your um, under discovery, that you have your settings for uh, harvesting set uh, turned on and enabled. Um, make sure that you go back to your LAN watch by network and that you have selected your agent deployment package. Um, then run your scan uh, and then using your discovered devices, go ahead and deploy the agent out. Uh, thanks for watching this and uh, stay tuned for uh, the next sections.